welcome back to the channel. We have got wiring, lots and lots of wiring. This is going to start the wiring series on how to wire a car from start to finish. I see a lot of you lurking too, so if you're not subscribed, you need to go hit that subscribe button right now so you can follow along. It's going to be a big project. There's going to be a lot of videos over. I can't fit all this in one video. It's probably going to be five plus parts. I don't know. But this one's kind of the intro. I'm going through everything. I'm laying it out. And this is kind of my game plan of what I do when I wire a car. So I've kind of cleaned this area up and I've got mostly the wiring going on. Um, a brief overview of the car. It is a fuel tech car, uh, FT600. And they have that FT600 Pro harness already. So the harness is already made. Um, I haven't determined if I'm gonna be doing some modifications to it or just let it be plug and play. We'll see. The last car I wired that had a plug and play harness, we ended up tearing apart the whole harness anyways to make it better. So we'll see what I end up doing on this one. Um, but yeah, and then it also has a k and I believe, kind of um, relay board. This is gonna, you know, house like the ignition and turning on air to water pumps. It's gonna handle the brake lights and some of the relays and that kind of stuff. So it handles the body side of the wiring and the ignition. And then the fuel tech's gonna handle obviously the engine management system. So those are kind of the, the main two pieces, but I'm gonna just go over everything that I got going on here. I'm gonna kind of brief tool introduction of, you know, tools I think there's required to do this kind of job and then I'm going to go through where I kind of start, what I've been looking at, how I've been playing in and out, and just kind of show you an introduction of what we're doing here. All right, tools 101 for wiring. We'll just kind of go through these here pretty quick. Um, I got a pair of normal Milwaukee wire cutters, you know, 15 bucks, more great. Flush cutters, these things are the best thing ever invented. If you don't have a pair of these, I highly recommend getting you a pair. They're flush cutters, they're angled, they can cut really small stuff really close. These are great, I use these like crazy. I have some wire cutters, these are like south wire, you know, wire cutter, or wire strippers. Um, for stripping the wire, you know, 22 gauge all the way up to 10 gauge. They're like 30 bucks at Lowe's, you can adjust the tension and stuff on them. Mine have been used a bunch, they still work great. Next up would be some crimpers. These are just a standard pair of crimpers and I believe these are Channel Lock brand. They handle insulated and non-insulated crimps. We'll go over you know that here in a sec, what crimps are what, but I use these all the time, they're really good. Next up is some Holly crimpers. These are for Holly terminals, like their ECU terminals. The reason I'm bringing these up is because FuelTech Terminals for their main connector are the exact same as Holly. So these kind of cover everything. These will also do a ton of different other style of connectors. And then Holly actually makes some of these that are for weather pack as well. You know, you'll need a pair of these or 20 something bucks or so. Last ones on this list are the T&E crimpers. These are really expensive. But these handle all solid barrel contacts. So you can adjust depth and strength of the crimp and everything. These would be for like solid pin Deutsch connectors, which I'll show you here in a sec. These also are for a lot of the bulkheads out there that go through the firewall and have all the wiring. The Maven Performance bulkhead I have on my Mustang, 100 pins plus. T&E crimpers did all those, does a fabulous job. I cannot recommend these enough. Don't try to buy the cheap alternatives. You will ruin your connector. You have to buy the nice ones. Just, it is what it is. Um, a few of the other tools I use, obviously a heat gun. You're gonna need a heat gun. I use this when I'm in the car, battery operated. It's nice, it's easy. Um, I have a plug-in one that gets hotter quicker and even hotter that I use if I'm like building a harness on the bench. So both have their purpose, they're both really good. Um, gonna need a voltmeter, you know, a tool. 
and then these big crimpers will kind of go over these here in a sec but i think that kind of covers you know what tools you need you know i i use some electrical tape and cloth electrical tape for the harness stuff i'll use these to kind of bind the wire together and then i'll use this if i need to do anything on the outside of the loom because it looks a lot better than cheap electrical tape for loom, you know, I use Alex Tech. It's just something you can get on Amazon. I use it on a bunch. It's the split loom. Um, it looks really good. I like this stuff. Um, I've used it on a ton of cars. Everyone's really happy with it. It's very similar to the Holly loom that they have on their stuff. Um, I think that kind of covers the tools. On to the materials that I'm going to be using for this specific build. Uh, I guess we'll just kind of start off with some of the wires. This is welding cable. I use this for the main power system of the car. So I'll go from battery to cutoff switch, cutoff switch to distribution block, distribution block to starter, alternator, the grounds. Um, I do run a ground to the chassis at the battery and then I actually run another ground all the way up. Um, we'll go over that as I do that and explain kind of the benefits of that. But I use welding wire for all that. So this is four gauge welding wire. Um, it is made by EWCS. There it is, if it'll focus. Maybe not. There it is. EWCS, they make welding wire. It's available like on Amazon. This is four gauge for this car. I use four gauge pretty much on everything. It'll handle plenty of load and it's great stuff. Since I started using welding wire, all my electrical issues, power related, have just gone to nothing. Quit using stereo system power cables. They're junk. They're not good. Get you some good quality welding cable. I and mean, look at the strands on this. Super fine strands, a lot of them. It's really heavy duty. It's very flexible. This stuff is good. Um, look it up. Start using your builds. I use it in my personal car, several other cars. Put it on this car. It's the best stuff. With those, you need those big terminals and you'll need these bigger set of crimps. Um, you know, it's just part of it. Get you some, these will do all the different gauges. Um, I like them, it, it, easy enough. So on to the other wiring, you know, you need a bunch of quality wire that goes with it. You can go buy wire anywhere. Um, it'll be super thick sleeve, not a lot of strands inside, whatever. In the end, I like using Tefzel wire. I get it from RaceSpec. Um, it's good quality wire. It's not the cheapest, but it's thin sheathing, really strong, high number strands, lightweight. It's, it's the best wire to use with wire in a car, in my opinion. So I'll use this stuff for all accessories, sensors, and everything that's not in the main harness, I'll use this kind of stuff for. Um, kind of going over with wiring, you got crimps. I don't use insulated crimps, I don't solder. I do feel crimping is the best, but I use non-insulated. So you know, these are 22 to 16 gauge, 16, 14 gauge, and then I actually have these one to many's. So this would take like one small wire in and then you can have multiple wires coming out or a bigger wire coming out. These are great for like five volt accessories for sensors. You can have that five volt come in and then four five volt wires come out to go to different sensors. I use those all over the place. So I'll use uninsulated crimps and then I'll use just heat shrink to cover them after I do that. Um, I've used some, you know, name brand heat shrink. In the end, I just get some good adhesive lined heat shrink. It is what it is. Not trying to point fingers. Some people like other stuff. That's fine. I like that stuff. It works good. Next up, Deutsch connectors. Um, I use these everywhere on the car. It just makes everything better. These are some four pin, small gauge wire. These would be good for, you know, like I said, shock sensors or ride height sensors or stuff like that. With the Deutsch connectors, I use these solid barrel contacts. These fit in that fancy crimper over there that we talked about. So get some of those Deutsch connectors, four pin, two pin, six pin, eight pin. I use them everywhere. Um, they're just super handy making the harness, you know, modular so you can take it in, take it out and leave connectors or sensors on. It just, it works really good. I'll use those anywhere possible and it's really handy. And the next part, I guess for this car is all those wiring harnesses. Look at all those things. 
Um, so this is the FuelTech Pro harness. You can see here, this is the main harness that goes in the back of the ECU, which is also your display if you didn't know that. But then he's got everything for there. He's got, you know, coil harnesses, injector harnesses, input output harnesses, and EGT harnesses, and just tons and tons and tons of harnesses. I'm going to be using everything that we can out of there. I may make some, um, I know like smart coils, they need a lot of power. A lot of times I like to run my own relays for those and run my own big wire for those. Sometimes the harness stuff on that's just not enough, especially on these methanol cars where you're giving a lot of dwell and a lot of spark and it needs a lot of power. So we'll kind of go over that as we go, but needs to say, all the FuelTech Pro harnesses are there. Uh, we're gonna be using those. I've been going through this and kind of mapping out and just learning this. This is my first FuelTech car. So I've been going through the diagram. Their owner's manual, you know, diagrams are really nice. And they show you just tons of stuff and talk about it and go through all the different connectors. Really been uh, doing it. It's very similar to the Holly. There's not a lot of difference here. So these connectors, like I mentioned earlier, they're the same as Holly. So there's a lot of similarities why they're very different. The wiring is, I mean, it's point A to point B. You got to hook up all the sensors. It's pretty straightforward. So kind of last piece that we're talking about on this car is some sensors. He has some Rife sensors, I believe. Yes, then these are made by TBM, the brake man. So like this one's a transmission one, so it's got two pressures on it. And then Motion Raceworks makes this fancy bracket to put it on the tail shaft of the transmission. These are awesome sensors. They really clean it up and give you connectors and everything. It's a clean look, puts a lot of stuff in one. There's a pressure one here that's got like four different pressures built into one. Here, this sensor is the coolant temp sensor and coolant pressure built into one. So you no longer have to have two sensors, got the wiring. So we're gonna be using a lot of that kind of stuff. It's really nice stuff. I like their stuff. And then we also down here have the smart coils, um, FuelTech smart coils. We're gonna be putting those on there as well. And that kind of covers, you know, brief overview, high level of all the stuff. Tons of boxes and wiring and extra stuff. He brought it all on um, peak and hold injector driver boxes because, yeah, I guess, I guess, um, I don't know. I got to look into that. I thought that was for like Bill Atomizer style injectors, but I don't know. We'll learn. We're going to learn all this together and go through this. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, last piece I don't want to forget is the K&R. Um, body wiring like relay system. This is a switch panel, really nice. Ignition fuel fans, auxiliary lights. Yes, it will have lights. It's not a street car, but it's gonna have headlights, tail lights, brake lights. So it'll have lights on there. Um, and then let me show you what I've got going on inside. I've actually been kind of working in here and getting organized. Um, you'll notice I taped up the cage, freshly painted cage. Looks amazing. Don't wanna scratch it up. So I taped it up where I'm gonna be working so I don't scratch it up. But I got it laid out. There's the relay board that I have already for this. Got it. So, you know, it's going to be up underneath the dash. I'm going to put a piece of carbon right up here in this corner. And it, that the relay board is going to be there. And then I'm also going to have some other relays and the power distribution and all that just kind of right there. We were going to put it right here like my personal car. But he has a water tank that goes right here, circulates water through the engine. I misspoke earlier, I said air to water. It's not, it's a water tank for the engine, but um, that goes inside the car and we don't wanna be scooping ice over all the electronics. So electronics are going underneath the dash, behind the dash. Um, but yeah, I was laying all this out. I'm really impressed with this K&R kit. I haven't used it. Um, it's very similar. All these relay kit board kits are similar, but this has got all the wiring laid out for you and labeled. The relay board looks really good. Power in, power out. And then they send you this awesome laminated wiring diagram. So it's, it's really nice. I'm looking forward to getting to using this. Um, new stuff, but you know, very similar. So yeah, looking forward to seeing how this all works out. No carpet in here yet. I'm gonna be doing a lot of the wiring and then we'll lay the carpet and put the trim pieces on. But I want to do a lot of the wiring first so we can see where everything's going. Then we'll get the carpet in here. So yeah, high level, you know, I think that's kind of what we're going with this car. This car's got a lot of fancy features. We got a lot of sensors coming to monitor everything. It is gonna be a really cool wiring project. Um, just hang tight. It's gonna be a lot of parts as I go through it. I plan on getting it done fairly quickly, 
um, within the next couple of weeks. There's going to be a lot of hours in it, but I'm going to take you guys along for the ride. It's going to be really cool. So hang out, follow along. I'm going to put these in a playlist on YouTube, so kind of make sure you follow along. See you for the next one.